parasitic worms love us. And in turn, we are beginning to love them back. If I had uh, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or multiple sclerosis, I would infect myself without hesitation. The fuck? A colleague and I gave ourselves hookworms, and my colleague had 20 hookworms, and I only had six. And being a competitive person, I thought, well, I'm going to get more. Dr. John Crows and Alex Lucas are hooked on worms. Worms are both bad and good. In developed countries where we are well nourished, worms are potentially good. The medical use of worms is now being put to the test. Hugh Sheardown is suffering from celiac disease, a nasty reaction to gluten that causes severe diarrhea and pain. He and Judy Noonan are part of a pioneering clinical trial. We are experimentally infecting these people with hookworms to see if the infection has a therapeutic benefit on their Crohn's disease or celiac disease. These are diseases where the immune system attacks the lining of the intestines, causing chronic inflammation. So how can worms fix the problem? The last thing a worm wants to do is have our immune system ejected. They modulate the immune system and send it in a direction that just generally dampens inflammation and that protects them, stops them from, from being attacked. But the, the benefit of that is that inflammation in general is suppressed. As it turns out, it's the worm's spit that carries the magic ingredient. As a hookworm attaches, it releases all sorts of salivary proteins and some of those have immunosuppressive properties. With worms on board, Q's immune system is turned down and should stop overreacting to gluten in pasta. The aim is to use hookworm to change the immune response to gluten. For people with celiac disease, any amount of pasta can be dangerous. Six weeks with worms and Hughes reached a milestone. It's a tiny morsel, but previously even this would have made him sick. When we reintroduce gluten to celiacs who have hookworm infection, that their response will be muted and they'll start to tolerate low doses of gluten. For Hugh Sheardown, the experiment was a success. At the end of the trial, he could eat a full bowl of pasta. Live worm therapy is a good proof of concept, but I don't think it'll ever become a scalable, widely used uh, method of treating inflammation. However, if we can identify and harness the actual molecules that are responsible, we can then turn those into a much more conventional type of drug. Wow. But desperate patients aren't willing to wait. An approved drug will take many years to develop. So the seriously ill are signing up for treatments in the hookworm underground. Originally I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and because those medications weren't working for me, they switched it to irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. If you allow uh, to pursue alternative therapies, especially when the other possibilities seem not so great. On the other hand, if it's not proven to work, and you don't know it works, and you're basically just buying into a dream. Valesquez Manoff is a science writer, but his interest in alternative therapy is very personal. My whole life I've had uh, asthma, I've had food allergy, and I've had, starting at age 11, I have an uh, autoimmune disorder called alopecia areata, which means my immune system turned on my hair follicles, basically shutting them down. After a 